In this presentation, we are going to use all the laws, properties and principles that characterize the electric field to analyze the effect that charge distributions produce in space. But we are going to look in this case at discrete systems of charge. Taking into account all that we have seen when I have different charges in space, in this example that we can analyze from the theoretical point of view, we have only three charged particles, two of them positive and one negative. We analyze the effect that is going to be produced on a problem point P in space and that J is interested in knowing its properties to place a fourth charge. What we have to do is to see by going over all the fields generated by each of them and apply the principle of superposition, adding the characteristics with the parameters of each of the charges. Let's look at the first of the problems. In this one, Amanda is observing the effect in space of two charged particles one of them of value plus Q, which is located at the point minus zero zero of a Cartesian reference frame, and the other charge of value minus two Q at the point at zero zero. We want to help Amanda calculate the point in space where the electrostatic field is going to be zero. We have it very well characterized in our system. In this reference frame, my positive particle on the negative axis, on the negative part of the OX axis, and my negative charge on the positive part of the OX axis. What we have to do is to keep in mind that I am going to analyze at the point of study that I want to analyze the effect of the positive charge and the negative charge. We are going to feel out a little bit how the resulting electric field vector would go due to the two charges. For the positive charge on a point P sub 1, this would be the effect of the field on that point. We have chosen, let's notice, the point P sub 1 equidistant from both the positive charge and the negative charge and on the O axis and a little bit marking the mediatrix with respect to the distances of the positive charge and the negative charge. The effect of the electric field due to the negative charge will be the vector indicating the field line and the attracting direction. The contribution of the two, to take it very well into account, we will consider the vertical and horizontal components of each of them. For the positive charge and for the negative charge, it is clear that the resultant vector due to these two charges will have a global direction represented by this global field, vector in P sub 1. If we do the same study for a point, because by symmetry in the negative part of the y-axis, and we analyze as before the fields due to the positive and the negative, at the end we find as resultant vector field this one that we see here. I think it is clear that from the sum of the two contributions we are always going to have a global component, horizontal and also in the different configurations according to vertical component. Therefore it seems that points outside the O-axis and it is not clear to us that we can find that point of zero total field as we intend to calculate. Let us now analyze the point P sub 3. At this point if we take into account the conditions of attraction and repulsion of the two charges attracting for the negative and repelling L sub 1 for the positive charge, we see that also the overall contribution is zero on the vertical axis, but it is not zero on the horizontal axis. Therefore, in the end, a point between the two charges does not seem to be a good candidate to find that point of zero total field. But if we analyze now this point P sub 4 to the left of the negative charge, we do see that by analyzing the two contributions, the E sub 1 and E sub 2, we have the contribution of the two fields are in the same direction but opposite directions. Then we are going to impose now the condition of superposition on the y-axis of the two fields because when we add the two, one will be positive and the other negative. So we will be able to find that point of null global contribution. We place the two particles very well to the reference system and the distances with respect to the point P sub 4 of study. We have then that the positive charge is at a distance x sub 1 from the point P sub 4, the negative at a distance twice a, according to the parameter of the statement, and the negative charge with respect to the point of study at a distance x sub 2. If we take into account the sum of the two contributions with the charge of each of our particles and the distances to the study point, it turns out that these distances can be related taking into account that x sub 2, as we see in the diagram, would be the sum of 2a plus x sub 1. Therefore, in my global equation, I would be left with this representation. If we impose the condition that I want that in my point the global field is null, a sub 1 plus e sub 2 is equal to 0, I am left with this equation that simplified would have this representation and I could calculate the value of my variable x sub 1 that would give me the solution. 
I find in the end two possible values for x sub 1. x sub 1 coordinate on the x-axis a value 4.8 times the parameter a and a second solution of x sub 1 minus 0 0.8 times a. We have therefore that they do exist and we can find points of zero global field. We analyze a second problem. In this problem I am told J is experimenting with the electric field he can create from three charges. To do this, J has two charges of value, two microcoulombs that are at the vertices B and C, whose coordinates we have very well defined, of an equilateral triangle as shown in this drawing. I am asked what must be the value of the charge that J must place at vertex A of that triangle so that the field in the center of the triangle is zero. We have a very good scheme with the coordinates as they are describing me in the statement and I want to find the charge that we must place at this point. We are going to analyze it. I must not lose sight of the fact that the sum of the contributions of the three charges that are located at the vertices of the triangle must give me a null contribution in the center of the triangle. And taking into account the distances and how are the charges at the vertices B and C, it is clear that it will give me a resultant field whose horizontal components will cancel each other since one is positive and the other is negative in terms of directions and in the same direction, but the vertical components will overlap. Therefore, taking into account this configuration, it seems clear to think that in A what I must place is a positive charge so that it cancels the vertical contribution of the other two charges. Therefore, the field at the origin of the reference frame that coincides with the center of the triangle will be a superposition of the field due to A, and that will compensate the field due in the vertical axis to the contributions of the particles at the vertex B and C. I do have to be clear that in this direction, the field contribution from B, for example, would be the total modulus of the field I have multiplied by the sine of the angle, only in vertical component. I am left, therefore, with this representation for the charge at vertex C. Taking into account the sine of the angle by basic trigonometry that we know, how to represent it as a function of the dimensions and the distance of the charge C. In this case, to the center of the triangle, I obtain that the value of the field then generated by each of the charges is going to be 2.25 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb and imposing that condition in this equation that I have found before, having clear that the value in the origin of the reference system has to be null, I obtain that the value of the field that must produce the particle A is 4.5 times 10 to the 3 newton coulomb match. In vector form, it will be directed according to the vertical component of the axis OI, and therefore the charge that I must place. In A will have a value, clearing from the equation of the field that generates me, of two microcoulombs. Therefore, we have seen how to practice the different properties of the electric field, and we already know how to calculate specific values of charge or field generated by discrete charge distributions. I apply the general field definition, take into account the interactions from the field lines and never forget that I have to use the superposition principle to consider all the charges involved. We will continue with more studies in future presentations. Thank you very much.